Hi there, my name is Ashley. Welcome to Wix Made Simple, where I'm here to make Wix simple. And you might uh, meet a guest joining us today in the form of a fly that will not leave me alone. All right, we are going to talk about Wix bookings, and we're going to talk about hosting like public classes. I have clients who use both Wix events and Wix bookings to sell tickets for um, public events. And there are kind of pros and cons to each way of doing it. Uh, events, Wix events collects a lot of information from your clients about, or your customers about, um, themselves. The back end of it is, um, just more robust and it's great for if you are hosting, you know, a concert or, um, a retreat or something where you really need a very robust guest list. Um, maybe with some like additional features. There is a fee involved when you do utilize Wix events that you don't find when you are utilizing Wix bookings. Um, I think it's kind of taking a, kind of a nod from Eventbrite in that way. Uh, but there are a lot more features on Wix events than there are through bookings. Um, so it might be the case that events is a better fit for you. Um, or you might be able to get away with utilizing Wix bookings and then setting up a class. So here I am on the back end of my site and I'm just going to be making a um, public event that um, say I have a client right now who sells tea and she hosts tea parties. And so um, we're going to use that as an example to make a class and show you kind of where you're gonna find all of the settings to get that set up. So while I'm here, I just did wanna remind you that you can book private training sessions with me. I've got 30 minutes and an hour um, available and we can go over whatever trouble you are running into on your Wix website and I'm gonna actually be on your site on the back end. So we're solving the problem while you're learning. So it's really a great value for you if you're kind of stuck on something, um, you can find those services at wixmadesimple.com. So I'm in my site dashboard underneath the catalog. I've uh, navigated over to booking services and I'm going to click add a new service. Now there are some kind of preloaded templates into Wix, whether we're talking about a appointment, um, a class or a course, you can also start completely from scratch. Um, and these little kind of taglines are very helpful to help you figure out, um, you know, what it means for something to be an appointment versus a class versus a course. Um, what we are going to set up today is a class. It is a group session that can recur and clients book any session that they want to join. So just because it says that it can reoccur there doesn't mean it has to. It can be a one time event. I'm going to start from scratch and then um, get this set up. So I have a sticky note somewhere. Here we go. Um, that I'm going to use to kind of be my sample for you guys. Um, you're going to use the name to type in the title of your event, Tea Blending Basics in this case. The nice thing about Wix, um, if you've watched any of my other videos, you'll know I love the feature to browse through stock photos. Uh, without having to go to some like third-party site, you can find great stock photos right in the media manager. So this is going to be the featured image for this event. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to go down to either media from Wix or Unsplash. I really like Unsplash, so I'll start there. And I'm just going to search for T. I'm going to find a nice um, image for this T class. And then go ahead and add that to my page. I think I'm going to do this one and I'm going to move my face for you guys. Hey, and I will add to page. So, um, I love that feature of being able to just grab stock images really easily. Um, all right. So we've got the name of our, you can see over here with my mouse, the name of the event, a nice little photo for it. Um, we can take some of the details here. Um, and drop those in. Some of these do have word limits. And so that's just something to be mindful of, but you can kind of play around with the different ways to display your description details. If you, a tagline is totally optional, but say, you know, 
it'd be a good place to be like, come learn to blend tea or something. Um, okay, so the description includes a tour of the urban medicinal farm, tea tasting with a great, with a treat, not great, lesson and tea blending. Okay, so here you can set the maximum number of participants. And let's see if she gave me one. Five people, 12 people. Okay, so we're going to set this at a maximum of 12 people. We are going to say that, and you can see that as I'm filling in this information on the back end, it is also populating kind of a preview of what that is going to look like on the front end. Um, that's just one display of it, but it can display in all different kinds of ways. So we are going to have our clients pay for this per session, and it's going to be a fixed price. In this case, it is $20. Or wait, no, this is, we're going to online deposit and the rest in person. So the amount is 60. The deposit is 20. So before I jump ahead of myself, you can, there are a lot of options for accepting payments for this type of group ser service or class. You can have a fixed price. You can have it be free. You can have different ticket levels depending on, you know, like maybe it's a child or an adult. Um, or if you have like a certain way that you charge, maybe it's like a scholarship or needs-based um, sliding scale fee, something like that. You do have a lot of options for that. And then you also have options about how you are going to pop process that, those payments. So whether you are going to uh, process the entire amount online, the entire amount, I'm going to make my face even smaller. Okay, hold on. <laughs> the entire amount online, the entire amount in person, or whatever works best for you for this particular class. Um, this online deposit and the rest in person is a really great option. Um, this is a new feature that I've noticed recently that's been released. Uh, so that is kind of a great choice for small business owners, in my opinion. You will set the location. If you are, um, if it is like an online uh, event, I'm not going to get into that, so I don't have to share that the address of my client. Uh, but you will add your physical location. If it is an online event, you can toggle on this video conferencing and then connect your video um, service. So in, in most cases, we're talking about Zoom. Um, mine's already connected in this particular uh, case because we're on the back end of my web website. Okay, so now we've got the basics of this event loaded into here. Now we're going to set the schedule. So because we are using services um, in order to set up these classes, um, instead of setting just like the event date or something like that, it's, it's in this kind of uh, weird location here of the schedule. So what we're actually doing is we're setting up a session where this class is available. So we'll go ahead and add the session. I'm going to, every time it does it, I just, I'm going to go ahead and click save and continue. And then we're going to select if you have multiple people on your staff, who's going to be the one teaching that. And then the date, which is August 29th. The time, which is, those are a lot of notes that you definitely don't need to see. <laughs> You're getting a real insight into my, my work uh, life right here. So let's say it's from six to eight. So it's a two hour event, not 36, 6 p.m., two hours. And then um, this, you know, is not gonna repeat. So what we're gonna do is set an end date and it's gonna be the same date. <laughs> um, or we'll do that. So the the way that this is kind of designed is in theory a really great fit for like say a yoga class so you've got yoga level one and it's taught by rachel and it happens weekly on tuesdays at a certain time in a certain location and it goes until whatever um you however can do these single sessions by just tweaking things a little bit so because we don't have an option to say that it does not repeat or you just select the next date and it's gonna obviously not populate that next um session go ahead and save that you can add if you want to add like additional images 
to your class, you can do that. So if you've got a great gallery of images to promote it, this would be the place to, to drop those in. Add alt text just to like optimize those images for SEO, especially for like local listings and local events. Like I would suggest adding in your location. Um, I'm in Fargo, <laughs> actually. And so um, you you know, would have like tea blending class, Fargo Moorhead or tea blending class, San Francisco. And then your other options here are going to be to take a look at your booking policy. So there is a default policy, but if you have particular needs for the events that you're hosting, whether it's like dietary restrictions or allergies or whatever the case may be, this is the area where you would look through and make sure that you do have the correct fields populated to be collecting the information you need from your clients. So we're going to call this good. I'm going to save it. And then I'm going to show you just on a, um, like a random page on my site, how we would drop that in and make that visible. So I'm just double checking here that this is yes, Thursday. Perfect. One-time sessions and rescheduled sessions will appear on booking calendar. Beautiful. All right, we're going to hop right into the editor. So I'm going to go down here to edit site, and then I'm going to go and I'm just going to make a really quick blank page for you to, um, if you haven't already loaded, which if you're working on your adding an event to your Wix bookings, you already have Wix bookings installed on your website somewhere. So great job. But what I want to show you is just all of the different options that we have for kind of customizing how those events display. So this is, um, I'm just going to add a really quickly add a blank page to my site. If I remember how to do that. <laughs> okay, hold on. I'm going to go into menu. I'm going to add a page here and then I'm just going to add a blank page. So when you're adding a, let's call this T classes. When you're adding a event to your actual website, we know that we, we created that event in Wix booking. So what we're wanting to do is go down into the add elements panel and we are going to move my face around over here and we are going to add, go all the way down to bookings. And when you've selected that, you can see that you have some options. You can add a single featured service, a service list, um, kind of like a mini menu. There are a lot of different um, pre-designed options here, but you are going to choose the one that's the best fit for your particular display on your page. So say you offer like... Um, cosmetic services, haircuts, that type of thing, and you want to have a spot on your website where you are constantly promoting that next available option uh, for an appointment, that is a kind of standard bookings design element that you can drop into your site. But for this purpose, what we're going to do, because there's only one event that I've designed here or made here, I'm just going to do a featured service where I'm just going to click this and drop it on there. I see a lot of people kind of just stick with the classic design for this, which is completely fine, but there are a lot of options for customizing what these little, they're called widgets, <laughs> what these little widgets uh, look like. So the first thing you want to do is click on your widget and you want to go into the settings of that. That's going to allow you to select the actual service that you want to promote in this particular widget. So I'm going to select this tea blending basics that we just set up. And then from this same settings menu, I can go down one more um, menu item into layouts and I can just toggle through a couple of the different options I have for the display here. There is the side-by-side -side display, overlapping, strip, and grid. And those are just some basic kind of pre-built ones. Um, I like the overlapping. I think it's a like a, it fits with a lot of the aesthetics of my clients websites but you choose the one that fits best for your website and know too that within each individual layout you have more options for customizing what that looks like so for instance if i scroll down here i can choose between a left side or a right side image placement i can customize the image cropping i can even adjust the text alignment with the click of a button here and um just see what all of my different options are so that is you know where you are going to find those kind of 
layouts and then where you're going to find the settings for those particular layouts. Now you can also go one layer deeper and go into the display of how these little widgets look. And so if I toggle down one more menu item here and go to display, I'm going to um, be able to show and turn on and off different service details um, and whether I want it to display an image or no, if I want to include a subtitle or read more link, a divider, and um, really get specific about, here's, here's my co-host today, a kitchen fly, um, really get specific about what this looks like and what information it's gonna hold. I can also go down to the text, and so say the button is automatically saying book now, but I actually want it to say something like in in rule, <laughs> enroll now or something, you can make those adjustments in the text menu section and then finally go into the design. So if you've utilized kind of the site designer site theme on your website, it's automatically going to be pulling from those uh, settings to populate like the text font style, button color, that type of thing. But that doesn't mean that you have to stay uh, stuck with those uh, design elements or design choices. And it's in this final menu item called design that you can get specific about how this particular widget displays. So I can see it's got like kind of that dark gray background and I want the background to be white. So I'm going into the background inviters. Instead of gray, I'm going to pull a white out of there. And then you can see that you can get really specific about all of the different, you know, pieces of this particular widget. The button is automatically mustard, but maybe I want it to be a different color. Um, you can adjust what it looks like when it hovers, uh, but there are a lot of different options for really customizing what this event um, is gonna look like when it's displayed on your site. So hopefully that could help answer some of the questions that you might have about how you can set up a class or a service on your website using Wix bookings. If you have a trouble spot with your particular website and you're wanting some one-on-one -on -one support, you can reach out to me. You can book a 30 minute or a one hour private training session where we're going to solve your problem and you're going to learn how to solve your problem in the future. Um, so really killing two birds with one stone. And if you have any ideas for future videos, make sure to leave those in the comments. And if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and do that. And thanks for watching.